In this video, I'm going to reveal my very first Amazon FBA product, why it failed, but why I still think it is a great opportunity. What's up guys, welcome back. I'm Andy, you're watching Learn How. And in this video, I'm gonna reveal my very first attempt at selling on Amazon back in, I think it was 2015. I'm gonna talk about the product. I'm actually gonna show it to you right here. I'm gonna show you the Jungle Scout data and show you why I was very, very interested in selling this type of product and why I shut down my operation and completely stopped, I guess, why my product failed and how you can avoid that same type of mistake. So let me pull up right here on Amazon. This is the product that I was going to sell back in 2015 when I was first looking at selling on Amazon. I had downloaded Jungle Scout. It was a brand new company back then. Um, I actually got, I think I paid a lifetime Jungle Scout membership. I think I paid 49 bucks for it. So crazy, right? Early, early stages. But after doing all my product research, looking at different opportunities, I was looking for a product that... It's funny now that I think about it because I teach in my podcast, look for small, lightweight, and simple products, basic products. Um, I actually had that philosophy kind of back in day one when I first started this. And I saw these acrylic sign holders as a great product because they were really basic. Um, there wasn't a ton of moving parts. Um, they were relatively small, I guess, because you could pack a lot of them really close together. And it was a simple product. The only downer is I guess it could be considered fragile. Um, I actually, I, I ordered samples, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in just a second, but I ordered samples from different manufacturers overseas, and some of them showed up completely cracked and shattered. Like, it was really bad. Some of them showed up really, really nice, and I actually had one. I think I actually still have it today. I think I kept it as like a keepsake. I think it's probably up in my attic, um, but it was a really, really good quality product but I'm going to tell you why I didn't end up pursuing it. But just for fun here, I'm going to pull up the Jungle Scout data so you can see how crazy good this product is. Um, you obviously want to look, if you follow my podcast, you want to look for a product that like sells relatively well in like the zero to 100 review range. But even these top sellers, like we're on page one here. We're looking at products with, I'm not seeing a single one with over a thousand reviews. Most of them, if I'm looking right here at the reviews, we're looking at 300, 300, 300, 300. There's a couple 600s. But a lot of these 300, look how much they're selling. They're doing like 60 grand. They're doing almost 100 per day of this one product. And it's just a basic plastic sign holder. And we'll scroll and look at a little bit more data here. But like, look how well. I'm actually going to, let me load a few more results. And I'm actually going to sort by reviews here in just a second. So these are loading. And I'm going to start by reviews. Okay, let's get up here a little bit. <clears throat> but even these ones right here in the lower review range of, you know, 40, 50 reviews, which is not that hard to get, they're selling well. Five a day, six a day, eight a day, you know, three, four, five thousand, ten thousand a month. For one product with only 50 reviews, that's really solid. And then the farther up we get here, we're seeing, you know, $7,000, $15,000. 30,000, 20,000. Now we're getting into where we're looking at five digits pretty consistently for a lot of these products. So this product still is a great opportunity. I mean, if you're someone that wants to go out there and start a brand built around plastic sign holders, you can easily do different variations. You can easily do different sizes. Sounds crazy, right? So why didn't I pursue this product back in 2015? Well, there's a few reasons why. One of the main reasons why, we because I didn't have the money. Okay. I didn't have the budget that I really needed to be successful with this. In 2015, I was still a full-time student in college. My wife was a full-time student in college. We were just barely married. Uh, we were both student athletes. I played baseball. My wife played soccer, so we couldn't have jobs. Um, so we literally had no money. Like we were very, very broke. Um, so taking on this type of business endeavor was very risky. And I actually tell this story on my podcast, but when I was looking at plastic science and I was getting samples from a manufacturer, I actually paid $200 
for UPS shipping to get one plastic sign holder here from China, from one of one of the manufacturers. That was just one of the samples. And I made a huge mistake and, you know, they said, you should create a UPS account and send us your UPS number and then we'll just build a number. I said, oh, okay, sounds good. Well, don't make that mistake. Do not ever give out a FedEx UPS account number and let them tell you that they'll just bill your account. Do not do that. You want to know exactly the shipping charge up front. Anyways, that was kind of the big issue is like we had no money. So I was exploring this product. I, I bought Jungle Scout, which wasn't too bad, right? But I spent $200 on one sample and then I was spending $50 on other samples. So I was, I was already three, $400 down the hole just looking at samples, right? And for me back then, that was a lot of money. So what happened was is, like I said, I got some samples that were crappy. Like they were just crappy product. Some of them showed up broken, <clears throat> but I did get one that was really good. So it showed up and it was in really good shape. It was really sturdy and thick. It was awesome. Like I really, I thought I had the gold mine, right? But the problem was, is that the profit margin wasn't there. So I'm going to put over here, profit margin. That was the second reason why I really had to kind of shut it down was like I teach, you want to try to find a product with like a 40 to 50% profit margin because over time that's going to get eaten into like your profit margin is only going to kind of go down a little bit. You can recover a little bit of that ordering in bigger bulk as you grow, but for the most part, your profit margin is just going to get smaller and smaller as you outsource, as you scale up your marketing spend, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, my profit margin was sitting, if I remember correctly, I think it was sitting like really close to around 18%. So an 18% profit margin is really, really low. There's a lot of people out there who will go after a product with an 18% margin. But for me, it just, it just wasn't going to work. Like that's too small for my type of budget. If I had a budget of like $10,000, $20,000 to start this business, I could go after a 20% profit margin product because I'd have enough money to put behind it to really get it going and pick up the pace and maybe rank and start to get a lot of sales. And I could just overcome the low profit margin with just sheer volume of sales. But if you have a small budget, you definitely want to stay away from small profit margins. Small profit margins and small budgets do not work well together. You will end up really, really struggling. You're going to run out of money really quickly. You're going to get really stressed out and you're going to find yourself in a hole, an uphill battle, trying to compete with people with much bigger budgets. Whereas if you have a bigger profit margin, you know, in like the, I'll write over here, 40 to 50% range, even someone with a very small budget, you're making such a healthy profit that you'll have money to reinvest in the business. You'll have more money to spend on ads and still get a positive return. So it's a lot easier to play with small budgets if you can get a bigger profit margin. So that was the big kicker is the profit margin for me just wasn't there at the time. It was a little too low uh, based on how I wanted to sell. I think I was going to sell as like a three pack for $24.99 or something. I can't remember what it was back in the day, but uh, the profit margin was a little too low. So I actually, um, with shipping as well, so I was trying to figure out shipping costs from overseas and all those costs together made it not work. So I was actually looking at manufacturers in the United States. Um, and again, I found a couple that were really, really close. Like they made a really good product and with the shipping and everything, um, it was going to be like, I guess the cost of the product was a little bit more than China but the shipping was cheaper because we were already in the United States. We weren't having to ship it from China. Um, but still, the profit margin was still just a little bit too low for me. I think it was in the 20s, maybe 25%, if I remember. And yeah, for a small budget, that really would just be a real uphill battle. I'd be spending a ton of money before I ever broke even, before I ever made a profit. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough to look back now and say, well, five years ago, man, I who knows? I probably would have been one of the top brands on Amazon today. Maybe I wouldn't have even gotten a job. Maybe I wouldn't have finished school. Like there's all sorts of what ifs if I would have pursued it and just gone for it. Um, but I don't regret it at all. And I don't think you should regret, you know, making smart decisions that don't fit within your financial means. So if you don't feel comfortable with where you're sitting with your product or, you know, in your research, um, then just, you know, wait it out a little bit. Maybe it's not time. Maybe you need to wait for a better time in your life because look at us, right? 
five years ago, I could have done this. I went deep down the road. I shut it down before I lost too much money. Fast forward five years later, 2020, we've built an Amazon brand. We're doing $70,000 a month now. Crazy, right? So it, it, it all worked out in the end. So it's going to work out. Don't stress about it. Just make sure you find a brand, you find products, you find a company that you can build uh, that you feel comfortable with. And my biggest advice, save up your budget. Get a job, do whatever you got to do, put some money aside so you have a healthy budget to work with because that's going to give you a much better chance of success and you're going to do things the right way. My big question for today's video is leave me a comment and let me know why you want to start an Amazon FBA business. What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to quit your job? Do you want to achieve financial freedom? Do you want to be able to pay your bills, go on vacation? Let me know in the comments why you want to start an Amazon FBA business. I'm going to look through the comments and I'm going to potentially pick a winner to give away either my guide, my zero to 67 lessons learned guide that I sell, um, maybe a free coaching call. I'll hook you up. I'll comment below. So uh, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on that. If you like this video, guys, hit the thumbs up button for me. Subscribe. We've got more videos coming out for you to help you build your business, build your brand to achieve the life that you want to live. I'm Andy. You're watching Learn How. We'll see you in the next video.